Hello humans, it's just Martine, and today we're going to be continuing my rereading my favorite book series series where I reread Kingdom Keepers and roast it even though I love it. So right now I'm on book four, Kingdom Keepers Power Play. It is Thank goodness, over 100 pages shorter than the last book that I read for this series. I'm still probably going to end up having to split this into two videos, but that's okay. Last time when I split it into two videos, it was still two very long videos. So maybe it'll be shorter, <laughs> I say, but I'll probably have a lot to say, so who knows? Before I dive in, here's my official intro for me reading Kingdom Keeper 4. Kingdom Keepers 4 was the last of the Kingdom Keepers books that I read at least a while after publication, like didn't read it the minute it came out pretty much. So that's interesting. It was copyright is 2011. This is not my original copy. My original copy is back in my hometown, but I brought this one because it's paperback. Some things that I love about this book. One, Willa actually matters in it. Look, she's right there. She matters. Incredible. Willa has basically not mattered this whole series so far, which is unfortunate because Willa and I have a lot in common, which I didn't really realize until I grew up, but like we have a lot in common. So we both love Philby, <laughs> would be best friends with Maybeck. The only difference is that she is really good friends with Finn Whitman and that could never be my reality. <laughs> Additionally, there's a lot more Philby in this book. Come to think about it, there's so much Philby in this book. I don't really know why the third book is my favorite, but it still is. A shorter book, two of my favorite characters, less Finn Whitman all around. We can pretend he's not there at all uh, for part of this. So that's exciting. Love getting to see from the other's perspectives, especially seeing them at school. Oh, that's the big thing that happened. They start high school in this one, which is crazy because they've been 14 since the second book and 15 since the third book. Who knows how old they are now? I'm pretty sure they're still 15, but that will be something I keep an eye out for. And um, so they start high school, they all go to their high schools, their real high schools in the Orlando area. Yes, I've looked them up. One of my choir teachers from high school used to teach at Finn Whitman's <laughs> high school. So that's, that's pretty cool, except that Finn Whitman and I don't get along, but yeah, it'll be exciting times. Exciting things for, for will be happening here. Well, some sad things too, but in general, this is going to be a fun one, so uh, buckle up, because this is going to be a wild ride. Oh, also, R.I.P. the hat. Let's get into it, shall we? The first chapter of Kingdom Keepers 4, endless, 40 pages. That's like almost a tenth of the book. We start off this book with one big R.I.P. to Disney Quest, and also it being called Downtown Disney. I never got to go to Disney Quest, but I saw the outside, and I took a picture, and I was like, the Kingdom Keepers went there, and I really wanted to go inside one day, and they just got <laughs> Rude. This book really ages itself when it compares the number of friends Charlene has on Facebook to Ashton Kutcher's. Emphasis not only on Ashton Kutcher, but on the popularity of Facebook. Stop changing races just because you can't decide. People don't morph races. We already addressed Phila. <laughs> what did I say? We, al we already addressed Willa's race in book three. But now he's calling Amanda, he says, her looks often changing from slightly Asian to Polynesian or Caribbean. No, no, you can be mixed race, but you gotta choose, you gotta commit. You can't just be like, is this representation? Cause it's not. End of last book, he calls Jess and Amanda Kingdom Keepers, page two of book four. Amanda was not officially one of the Kingdom Keepers. I can't. So the smart thing that Jess got accepted into is an AP program, but like, Almost all high schools have AP classes, right? I was expecting like IB or something, magnet, AP pro. I love how he describes literally everything that happened in the last book as um, their last outing. Like they went for brunch or something. More proof that Finn is trash when he considers ditching Charlene and just leaving her alone. He doesn't, but he thought it. <laughs> Luowski spotted Finn and made a face like a football player who'd taken a knee in the wrong place. What a reaction to seeing someone to look like you got whacked in the nuts. <laughs> and Finn's response is, Finn didn't want to get drawn into that. <laughs> when Ridley Pearson compares the look between Amanda and Charlene, like taser shots. <laughs> I will say that in comparison to some of the other first scenes, this one goes from zero to 100 
real quick. I just want to know, was it popular in like 2010 to refer to puking as losing your cookies? Because now Amanda has said it. I. It was already iconic when Maybach said it, but like a whole book later and we're still using that phrase? Why? Finn is really thinking that Wayne had said like with the head cut off the snake, the body can't survive about the overtakers. When like at the end of book three, he literally told them, even though they're locking up Maleficent and Chernabog, there are others and they will still act and you have to stop them. This is your only chance. You're going to say now that Finn has been terribly seasick in the past, but when they're on a cruise ship, they will not mention it in the slightest. Interesting. Interesting. Do they discuss before how young the girls were when they went into foster care? Right now it's saying that Amanda was eight. So if that comes up later in the series, page 15, book four. So Finn and Amanda are like hanging upside down and this has gone over so quickly, like so fast, but the like seat restraints open and they fall down and literally crack the safety glass. They do not complain of soreness in the slightest. Finn's just like, <laughs> wow but like bam, right on the safety glass. I want a concussion or something, like something had to have happened to them. Finn is like, I mean, you gave us the card and just because he uses Charlene's nickname, Amanda gets so mad. She's like, you're gonna sweet talk her after she did that to us. I'm like, is using a nickname sweet talking someone? I had no idea. Finn sarcastically suggests giving the evil queen a pinch test to see if she's the real one, like an overtaker or a cast member. And either way, do you really think that would go well? Like that's so funny. You either pinch a cast member and probably get thrown out of Disney, let's be honest, or you pinch the evil queen and before you can finish, she's killed you. You're dead. Please don't describe tear tracks as snail lines of tears. Thank you. Cruella de Vil just points at them and she's like, look guys, it's the kingdom keepers. And people are like, oh my gosh, it is. As if Finn doesn't go to their school literally every day. Is he once bothered about it at school? No. But now that they're at a special Disney event, now it matters. <laughs> Every single book, no matter how short of a time between it so far, they have aged one whole year. Philby is now a 16 year old high school freshman. <laughs> Help, I just, Philby has tried to hack his school system before. Why? Also, you like just got to high school you already urgently have to hack on school time. I just think it's so interesting how like the kingdom keepers are also clearly like attractive, but so many of the second characters are described in gross ways. Like in the beginning of this chapter, it said that Greg Lewowski smelled like he hadn't showered in six months, gross. Now we're introduced to Hugo Montcliffe, who's like best friends with Philby and he has greasy hair and shirts with unidentifiable food stains on them. And I just want to know, Philby, help a brother out. He might sleep on your couch sometimes. He should use the shower too, is all I'm saying. Once and for all, Wayne already clears it up in book four. So I don't know why later in the series, Finn gets all crazy. Cause Wayne says, <clears throat> Finn is the natural leader, but you Philby are the navigator. Steer Finn in the right direction and he will lead you well. Don't worry Finn, you're still gonna lead. You just need some direction. Cause you crazy. <laughs> I really want to know, what were you IMing Willa about that you don't want other people to see. What is it? Just curious. Asking for a friend. This is the face I make every time Philby has his own chapter and you get to see inside his thoughts because I have always loved Philby so much. Sorry, BRB screaming over here. I have tried to understand how this works for so long but I'll just read it to you. I believe maybe it's a mind palace type thing, but not sure. Philby compartmentalized his ideas. That's fine. Okay, we got it. His mind works like a filing cabinet. He held ideas in drawers, opening one or two while closing others. He didn't think about it, it just happened. So it can't really be a mind palace because he doesn't think about it. So he has a drawer called like urgent and then he like closes it, he can go back to his classwork. And then he made a list of what had to be done in what order with an emphasis on efficiency. Comment down below, should I do a productivity video where I try, I try Philby's productive routine. <laughs> Will we? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Isn't it referred to as the frozen marble in the other books? But here, page 35, the reason I always thought it was this way, Philby said it, so that's what stuck in my brain. Uh, they call it the marble slab, like marble slab. Okay, not the frozen marble. I'm on to you. But also, Ridley Pearson really needs to stop being like, not as pretty as Charlene, not as pretty as this other girl, different. 
intriguing, interesting looking about like everyone but Charlene. I hate it. I hate it so much. She had an intensity that he totally got. <laughs> Spencer Randolph. Blech. Gross. Get him out of here. Also, I don't like it in real life, so why would I like it in a book? When an older high school guy likes a younger high school girl. Sure, he's just a sophomore, she's just a freshman, but it's still weird. Leave the freshmen alone. High schoolers, leave the freshmen alone. So they can monitor your home computer network, like your internet, but you say that you don't see the OTs hacking Verizon, which is a great line, just throwing it out there. But um, personally, I'm pretty sure my home Wi-Fi is from Verizon. Maybe they already have hacked Verizon. What about that? Poor Philby. Also, I love that his brain's solution to Spencer like staring at Willa is like, what if I just kissed her right now? <laughs> So funny. End of chapter one. Woo, finally. If you're new to this series, I present to you the biggest and most canonically shipped pair in all of Kingdom Keepers, Fike Finn and his bike, which once again gets mentioned at the beginning of chapter two. It wasn't just any bike, but a trick bike. Being on a bike, blah, 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 blah. Finn loves his bike, we get it. And so it begins the tirade, which for the rest of the series will be Finn being like, but I'm the leader, right? Not Philby. Suddenly he's like, was his leadership role of the Keepers in jeopardy? Had he done something wrong? And I'm like, no, Wayne literally said word for word to Philby, Finn is the leader. You are this other thing. Chill out. Chill out. I'm sorry, this description of Mrs. Whitman as the typical suburban mom just kind of slays my very heart. Mrs. Whitman, currently a brunette, was thin, happy-faced, and athletic. She hardly wore any makeup. Her shoes were what she called practical or earrings artistic. You make her sound like such a basic woman. And yet, your very first sentence about her in this book was Finn's mother was an actual rocket scientist. So I'm getting competing views. Like, are you going to treat his mother like just some housewife type thing? Or are you going to treat her like the badass, smart rocket scientist she is? Because I know you're not trying to make a point about people being both, because like, <laughs> I just know that you're not. <laughs> Whatever. We're counting down. We have a two week timeline until the bank statements come in and the money has to be back in the bank account. But is it ever addressed again? Does Mrs. Whitman get repaid? We'll never know. I mean, they're not wrong. Like they describe the outfit and I agree, but the audacity to say that Finn looks stupid in his disguise when he normally wears cargo shorts and Keens, unacceptable. I think one of the things that I love about the way that Philby is written as a character is that he unapologetically loves to learn and know stuff and I think that's so good because there's so many things in this world that discourage children from things that are nerdy or like studying or learning things or this natural curiosity that like all kids have and I just like seeing that represented really positively. I, I don't know. It just makes me happy because it's what I do, Philby said unapologetically and I just love that. Be unapologetically yourself, Philby. Yes, get them. Also, Philby just has so much integrity. Like he's so wholesome when Finn is like, we need to look out for Charlene. She's been like asking all these crazy questions and she just kind of showed up today. Philby's like, you can't accuse her of anything without evidence. We don't do that. And I just love him. <laughs> There's a very pointed thing about like what Finn's disguise looks like. And then a very pointed like paragraph about the fact that Maybeck is not disguised because he loves attention. And I want to know what is Philby wearing? <laughs> this book is the reason that I ever wanted to do the Kim Possible mission at Epcot. My mom, sister and I did it solely because I was like obsessed with this set of scenes and really wanted to do it. We did the one that started in Mexico, not in Norway though. So, but it was still, <laughs> we did it because of and it was pretty fun. Oh, this makes me mad. On page 63 here, it says that Finn's record for being all clear is 18 seconds. But in the last book, he and Philby had a conversation about how messed up that they couldn't like go a long time without having a bad thought. And Finn was like, yeah, my record is like five minutes and something seconds. Five minutes compared to 18 seconds. That is a huge difference. Which is it? Maybeck in book one introduces himself very pointedly as a Baptist. <laughs> Maybeck in book four. I'm not hanging here. I'm not big on churches. <laughs> you're telling me that the kingdom keepers have a rule. The keepers don't fly solo. And you're going to send a group of four of them on this one Kim Possible quest and send Maybeck into Mexico in the World Showcase alone? Just cause? So I'm just gonna come out and ask it right now. If the picture of Charlene proving that she talked to the evil queen is taken when she goes into the bathroom at Disney Quest and the book opens with Finn and Amanda waiting for Charlene to get out of the bathroom at Disney Quest. Why didn't Finn and Amanda 
see the evil queen go into the bathroom. Were they far away from the bathroom? So I guess she came back and found them where their place was, but I'm still not convinced that they wouldn't have noticed the evil queen. Also, some of these kids would have to be in the wrong gendered bathroom, like boys in a girl's bathroom or girls in a boy's bathroom. Would that raise the alarm for no one? They're all just standing there talking to an evil queen. I don't know. I get that it's just part of the story, but it makes me wonder, it really does. We have had it just the slightest bit revealed what Philby and Willa have talked about online that they're so nervous about people hearing because Philby is saying how he doesn't want Willa to see him kissing Charlene and Finn's like, you and Willa? And Philby says, this is news to you? And Finn's like, uh, I don't know. Philby says, that just confirms what Willa told me the boys don't get any of this stuff. So they've discussed how boys don't understand or like see people liking each other is all I'm saying. <laughs> Why does the third person narration call him Maybeck the Mouth when he starts hitting on Charlie? <laughs> what does that even mean? Quote, only Philby could sound like a male librarian at 1 a.m. And I have to ask myself, what does that even mean? Tell me when we ever learned that the court jesters that we met in book three were capable of every kind of martial art. Did we ever learn that? That's kind of random. Okay, so a couple of funny things to note about this scene. One, Philby and Charlene playing soccer with trolls hysterical to me. Good thing they're both good at soccer and apparently Charlene can still kick a troll well with no shoes on. So good for her, I guess. The second thing is the kiss. So this description has like baffled me for years until I finally got it, Um, which is ironic because after Philby kisses Charlene to break the spell, it says um, like he, he can't speak. And it says he was staring at Charlene like he'd gotten religion. And for the longest time, I was like, did he catch religion? Did he receive it or something? For some reason, the wording was just so weird that I didn't understand. I didn't get that by gotten religion, it means he understood religion. Like he looked as if he had suddenly understood religion entirely. And also I first heard this scene, not like physically read it because the first time I read book four, it was as an audiobook, and my sister and I were listening to it to try and fall asleep. Um, that's actually how we discovered the Kingdom Keeper series in the first place was we like checked out the first book from the library. But anyway, we were listening to the fourth one on CDs, we were falling asleep, and we were both sitting up in bed looking like this. <sighs> and what had just happened when Philby kissed Charlene it was absolute insanity to us. Philby was my favorite character, Charlene was hers, and we were like, what just happened? And it was just made all the more confusing by the phrasing of God and religion. I don't, I don't know why that's so funny to me, but I have fond memories of this scene. Very start of chapter three is a big mood to me because I just, like this is my first school day back from Thanksgiving break and the first sentence of chapter three is being back at school was a major letdown. That is true. So thanks Finn for saying what we're all thinking. First in this book, we get Maybeck the mouth and now we have Greg the gross, incredible. Finn still has the photograph in his pocket because according to Ridley Pearson, he only changed his pants like every four days. <laughs> Which when you're gonna wear them to sleep and during the day is just disgusting. <laughs> On page Page 106, it says that Greg Lewowski has red hair and hazel eyes, and I don't like the idea of him having red hair. Red hair is such a distinct feature, and Philby already has red hair in the series. Like, and it feels, it just doesn't feel like it fits. Does it say something contradictory like anywhere else? I don't know. I didn't know I was supposed to be paying attention to the color of Greg Lewowski's hair. Okay, I'm not trying to defend Greg Lewowski or anything, and he's a bully, that's for sure. But would I take it as far as to say that he was the kind of kid destined to be a serial killer? I mean, I don't really think so. I wish I had a way of sharing with you the way that McLeod Andrews performs Dillard saying the line, I'm going to call 911 in a girlish sounding threat from across the street because it is so funny. Wanda's out of jail, but has she repaid them yet is the real question though. Chapter four starts off so strong by introducing us to the best character in the whole series, Elvis the cat. Now, I know that I don't like cats, but I don't have to see Elvis in real life. And to be honest, he causes a lot of problems in this book, but I love him anyway. He's iconic. His name is Elvis. Waste it. The funny part about Judge Frollo's appearance in this book is that in the audiobook, McLeod Andrews reads it with a French accent. 
bad French accent, don't get me wrong, but a French accent nevertheless. And I'm like, even though he's French, Judge Frollo in the Disney movie does not have a French accent. And honestly, the speech he's giving, I'm trying to imagine it in like Judge Frollo's actual voice from like the movie, and it would sound a lot more sinister that way than in the weird <laughs> Frenchman. <laughs> it's just my opinion though. RIP Mr. Totems. Not the last life lost in this series. Ariel calls Willow Willow, and then Charlene Shirley, and I want to know what she calls all the guys. On page 138, that's when it says that Willow started liking Philby because they did rock climbing and like ropes courses after school together, so. When you say Jezebel is a name just went by a few years earlier, do you mean last year? Okay, so this could be totally fine, but I'm just saying that on page 109, Hugo says to Philby, we've got to get to algebra, and that Finn on page 147 is looking at a computer screen that showed an algebra 2 webpage he'd been using for his homework. Now, when Hugo said algebra, he could mean algebra 2, or he could mean algebra 1, in which case, a Ridley Pearson would have written it that Finn would be ahead by two classes of Philby, because in Florida, it goes algebra, geometry, algebra two. And if that is the mistake that Ridley Pearson made, you cannot convince me that Philby is behind on math in comparison to Finn. But at the same time, you can't really convince me that Finn as a ninth grader is already on algebra two, because that would have had to mean that he took both algebra and geometry in middle school, which I did. So Philby and Willa could do that, and Jess, that's totally fine, but like, Finn Whitman? I don't really think so. I, from what I know of Finn Whitman, I don't really think so, is all I'm saying. Finn just literally spit on his bedroom floor and we're not going to mention it. We're just gonna glaze past it. It said he spat on the floor before he knew what he was doing. No. I could be totally wrong about this, but I feel like we don't learn Philby's first name until book four. And if we do before, because again, I don't remember, but like, I also remember being intrigued that we found out his name in this one when I originally read it. But if we learned it before, they sure didn't use it often. And they just use it so much more in book four. And I love it. I think it's hysterical that his name is Dell and he's a computer nerd. <laughs> But I also feel like Ridley Pearson straight up did not have a first name for this boy until book four. <laughs> and I wouldn't be surprised about that either. And texting was illegal in school. I, I think you mean against the rules. I don't think you mean illegal. Philby has 10 minutes in between classes. 10 whole freaking minutes. Okay, I know Philby is smart, but like the fact that he is <laughs> the keeper's like numerical codes for their DHIs memorized is one thing. It is another thing. That string of characters to be 26 characters long and him to know it for all of them. That is so much to remember. Good for him, I guess. The number of Kingdom Keepers that enjoy strawberry ice cream is, I would say, viscerally upsetting to me. Philby eats it in book three, which is already bad enough for your favorite character to eat your least favorite flavor of ice cream. Yes, these are the things that I'm upset about in life. But now Charlene, too. How could they? <laughs> There are better flavors. Instead of saying like, this sucks, Maybach just said, this rots. What? This is also the first time that Maybeck calls Philby Philbo, and that has been a long held joke between my sister and I, uh, Philbo, because of this, so. But like, that is not a viable nickname that Philby would accept. He wouldn't just be like, yeah, you called me Philbo, not once, but twice in the same paragraph, which is more consistent than they are with Donnie Terry Maybeck. Just saying. And I'm just going to let that go. I'm going to let it be as if that's a good nickname when it's not. Very lame explanation given for why what they can and can't do in DHI Shadow is so inconsistent. Just that there seem to be exceptions to the physical laws of nature and Philby explained these as having to do with the survival instinct. Okay then. They mentioned maybe trying the entrance to the Utilidor behind Splash Mountain and I've been there. <laughs> I know he's talking about climbing through the trash, but been saying the sentence, how do you guys feel about getting filthy dirty? It's not my favorite, I won't lie. Finn trying to get back at Maybach for all these silly, stupid nicknames by calling him Macbeth. 
doesn't work. <laughs> when Philby says that the trash in the trash system smells like his dad's beef jerky farts, I just have to ask, what did Frank Philby do to deserve this type of slander? The fact that Willa's DHI in Epcot wears leader hosen is incredible. I wanna know what are the other hosts dressed like. Please, please. I want to know. I desperately need this in my life. Ridley Pearson really just roasted all the newlyweds who visit Disney by saying that despite the pajamas Willa would fit in, after all newlyweds went around the parks in mouse ears and bridal fields, on a scale of one to 10, pajamas barely registered. <laughs> the slander, it continues. I read this book and have held on to page 194 since because one of the only facts I know about Disney is that the geodesic sphere in Epcot is 180 feet tall and it's thanks to that. To anyone I've ever annoyed with that, you can thank page 194. Innocent question time. If on page 207 it says that if Philby, for Philby says, if I try to access it one more time remotely and I fail, any remote access will be blocked for 24 hours, including theirs. That'll leave the only access from here, this keyboard. Does that reset when base comes? Even though that he just said that they'd run iris scan, so like even though he has the password to get in on that computer, won't remote access be blocked for 24 hours? What am I missing? Okay, so I'm on page 214 and I'm stopping this video because I'm exactly halfway through this book and I'm going to have too many thoughts to make this entire book into only one video of reasonable length. So we're going to split it up. What am I thinking so far? I love this book. I'm stoked to see Gladys and Dell in action later and all those things. I love how much Philby is in this book. That's why it's kind of surprising that this isn't my favorite book, but it's up there for sure. It's a really good one. Things are heating up. So if you like this part one of book four, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up and comment down below. Have you read Kingdom Keepers 4? And if so, what are your thoughts on the first half of it or all of it, if you would like. My part two of this video should be coming out very soon. So tell me if you're looking forward to that and subscribe for more reading, writing, and college lifestyle content. And until next time, bye humans, bye.